Hi to Hill Garden Friends. Today we are going to do something really exciting. Guess what it is? Yep, we're winter sowing hollyhocks. So, let me get some more soil. I dumped out the other one because the neem meal had a detrimental effect. It cre created mold. So I don't know, but I'm gonna have to restart those petunias. I'm actually gonna go ahead and buy, especially the ones I wanted for the center circle garden, because I wanna make sure I have plenty of those. Now I do have sprouts in the container, despite the mildew and mold. Um, so I'm hoping they will continue. I am gonna go ahead and plant more because I wanna make sure I have those. So it was my bad. I should have known introducing anything like that can create mildew. In fact, I had the little brain blurb that said, mm, maybe you shouldn't do this and I ignored it. Don't ignore your little voices in your head. So anyways, okay, there we have some soil, a little bit more, thankfully. It has warmed up enough. In fact, I don't even have my heater on. I should turn my heater on so it's warmer. I'm more comfortable in here. So, yeah. No use in being uncomfortable. I just hadn't noticed I got so excited to work out here. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody wants to know how to winter sow hollyhocks. Okay, so there's a couple of hollyhocks I wanted to make sure I got growing. Now, a lot of times in out in my garden, my hollyhocks um, I will reseed themselves and they come up everywhere. But I wanted to do these black watchmen. Is that focusing for you? And then these, this one is apricot peach parfait. Beautiful, both a peach and a pink. Now I had one of these or two of these and the gophers ate them. Um, they were just so, so gorgeous. Yes, I do get the hollyhock rust in my garden. There are hollyhocks that grow wild all over this neighborhood. It is infected, all of them. It blows on the wind. I am not gonna prevent it in my garden, but I just remove the ugly leaves and enjoy the flowers. So I'm not too worried about it being pressured. Plus I have them at the back of the beds <clears throat> excuse me and then the nasty leaves are kind of hidden the ones that I haven't removed so first of all I'm going to fill up my winter sewing container you have seen how I do these cut them open etc I will link it below so that you can make sure and maybe I'll link it up here too um, when you do the little slide in you can tap it anyways pretty easy to treat them. There's many ways of cutting them open. There's many types of containers people use. These happen to be um, milk jugs. My sister gives me because she has boys who drink a lot of milk. So I just clean them up and use them. Free is good. All right, so I filled it with the soil. I did not tamp it down. So with these, this is the pom pom peach parf apricot peach parfait. It says space them six to eight inches. So I'm gonna space them a little bit closer because they're not in the ground. And then I will transplant them. Um, half inch depth. So let's get some seeds out. Now I had these seeds out here in the greenhouse and the moisture of the air has got to cut the packaging a little bit damp and soft. Not a good idea. I should have done this before. So I'm putting three across and I would say I'm putting them an inch apart. Now, um, as I said, I will transplant these come time. So I don't need them to be further apart than they are in here. And the more the merrier. I may have only a 50% success rate. So that will give me a chance of at least getting, let me say, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I put 12 in there, so if I get six, I'm happy. Now with the hollyhocks, because of my gopher problem, I'm gonna have to put them, plant them either in a pot to put in the ground and or in a raised bed that has a mesh underneath to protect them because they love hollyhocks. I couldn't believe it. They'll take down six foot hollyhocks. 
And you'll just go, and all of a sudden you'll see it drooping and dead, and you're like, what's going on? And you pull it up, and there's not a root left. It's just sitting in the ground. So I'm going to push each one of these down to half an inch here in the soil. And then I'll just scooch some of the soil over top of it. No rocket science. And you don't have to be exactly half an inch. It's all good. And then I'm going to firm the soil down. I could do it at the back of a spoon. Just firm it down a little bit. Not hard. Doesn't have to be really pushed down difficult. Difficult? That wasn't right. So anyway, so we're just firming it down there. And then we will tape it shut. So where is my tape? Aha, right over here behind my little broom. This is my handy dandy little cleanup broom in here. I was trying to clean off the shelves a little bit to move things around and I wanted to move my poor little ivy geraniums. It got super cold in here and you'll see how um, they've got a little mold and stuff on them. So I'm gonna cut off the dead leaves and move them either into the house under my light racks or I will move them into Primrose Cottage which is heated and they have bright window sills. So that will be another task in a moment. I want my tape. So this is regular duct tape. Somebody said they use clear duct tape. I've never seen clear duct tape. I have used uh, packaging tape um, but it didn't stick for the duration and so this one really does. And um, it does a much better job. So I don't know if that's what she really was using. But I haven't really looked up to see if there was actual clear duct tape, not packaging tape. Okay. So I start at one side of the handle and make my way around. The only little thing is these little divots are kind of a pain, but I'm not too stringent about it all. And then I'll take you out and I'll show you where I'm going to put them. Now I will go ahead... And I will, there were some left seeds left in the package, and I will go ahead and start some inside, but I'll do it a little bit later in the season. That was way too big for that. Cut it in half. Um, because I'm being really careful about what I start this early. You know, it's this is still January. It's not necessary, let me see. Um, let me see. They germinate in seven to 14 days, you know. There's so many things that I need to start that don't do well in colder temperatures, and the hollyhocks do, especially the ones like I, I start um, direct seed in the fall out in my garden. Now, I did put some of these seeds in the front. I was hoping, I hope that they come up. The only problem with that is um, I didn't plant them in a container that would protect them from the gophers. So I was just taking a chance. I had some, they were by the pink ones up in front. The gophers didn't bother those. I don't know if it's because it's a rocky area or what, but I'm gonna put apricot, peach, parfait, hollyhocks. I just put holly. Um, yeah, you can, I've used a Sharpie and didn't fight with them. This is a paint pen which lasts supposedly longer than a Sharpie, uh, but I also mark in several places. I'm just gonna put double hollyhocks here, and then I put peach and pink. Yeah. All well and good. And sometimes, like I've said, told you before, I will put a little marker inside. I just haven't been doing that, so. Okay, wrote on that one. Now, I do not water through the top. This is fairly moist. I'm going to just put it right out in the garden. We're going to get rain Saturday and Sunday. The water will go in there. I didn't, which I will do. These ones do not have holes in the top. Um, I read somewhere, somebody was talking about putting holes in the top. You know, before I've always just had this hole and did fine, but I thought, can't hurt. Maybe it could, I don't know, but there. So I have extra holes in top. So now we're gonna do the black one. Now I used to have one that was really, really dark. There's doubles of the black one too, which is just gorgeous. Um, I would love to get those too. So 
hollyhocks here. A lot of people complain because they reseed themselves readily and they say, it's like a weed. Don't plant them. You have them everywhere. Well, all you have to do is deadhead them. Take the seed pods off before they go to, you know, everywhere. Everybody, it's like there's no flower or plant that is totally hands off uh, in, you know, in a neat and tidy garden. Now, if you want to grow a wildflower meadow, but even then people mow them to get them to reseed and do well. You know, there's nothing that is just completely hands off. In a future video, we're going to talk about plant natives, which you may find the information very interesting because there's some people who are very polarized about planting natives and all of that for the e ecosystem. All right, again, I'm just going to seed them. Oh, that one was two. Maybe I'll go in there. In here, we'll see what we get. And have fun. I love winter sowing. Now, I'm doing a lot more this year just because it works so well. But also, it's so much less expensive. Now, indoor seed star starting is a great way to get plants that you want that maybe are pricey at garden centers, are you know not readily available in the colors you want, but you still have to factor in that if you grow them under grow lights for healthy growth, so they're not tall and spindly, um, and will do well out in the garden. Lighting, if you or if your electric bill is big like mine, if you pay a lot for electricity, then you know that gets expensive too because even though the lights are LED, mine are. LED, it still costs to have like a complete, I have a whole setup and I'm going to show you um, step by step my setup one day soon, I hope. Hopefully I'll get to that. Then um, you'll see what I have and it's, it's a kind of down and dirty type of one, meaning I don't go buy a whole setup fancy from some garden supply store. I kind of put together elements from, you know, from Costco, Home Depot, and stuff like that to create my indoor seed starting setup. But still, it's an investment and the ongoing electrical bill for keeping that going during the winter. It can be keep, keep the lights on like 14 hours. Some plants to grow well, um, they need that before you go ahead and put them out in your garden. So keep that in mind if you want to start, you know, indoor seed starting. Now, I know a lot of people, if they're starting cut flower farms or whatever, a lot of them will do that. And, you know, they're planning on making money from their garden. Whereas if you're like me, the home gardener, who's going to do this for your own enjoyment, then, you know, that you've got to factor in all the costs of whether it's worth it. Now, for the petunias, because I already have the seed start up, set up, it is worth it for me because I can pick out the colors I want but if I couldn't, for some reason, grow from seed, there is a garden center near me that carries the wave petunias. They carry many colors. Maybe not the colors I specifically were looking for, but I would content myself with what they had and be good with that. So I'm going to put black holly. So there's all kinds of options. If you are on a tight budget, you know, it's not hard to start seeds outdoors, like with the winter sowing method. Um, it works very well. I had one viewer or somebody on my blog or reader on my blog who said they started their wedding flowers, winter sowing, and they had masses and masses, and it was such a success. And I can imagine how, you know, Wedding flowers are expensive, and she grew all her own, started them with winter sowing. You pick the ones you want, the colors you want. There's such a variety of flowers that you can start this way. And even now, these are like the cold hardy that you start like January and February. But come closer to spring, you can start the more warm weather plants. I've started tomatoes this way, started them like in March, um, April, and then... They catch up to the ones I've started indoors when I've put them out, or even the ones that will come back that I let tomatoes fall on the ground and they decide to sprout. That's when I decide that it's okay to put my tomato plants out because 
the ones that are in the ground coming up of their own volition are, I think, well, if it's warm enough for them, it's warm enough for my other plants. Now that's after hardening off. The beauty of winter sowing is you don't have to harden off. They're already tough as nails when it's time to plant them in the garden. Now go ahead and watch, I'll link it, the video uh, more on uh, winter sowing, uh, what I do, and um, the, for best, the tip, my tips for the best success. So because there are a few tips and tricks that you need to know, and especially with where to put them once it starts warming up, all of that. So there is two jugs of our hollyhocks. The rest of the seeds, there's plenty more in here. Um, some of them I will go ahead and start indoors. I could probably start a couple more. I've got a couple more jugs. I've got two more bags of jugs. So to ensure success, don't be afraid to over sow, meaning sow way more than you think you want. You can always chuck the ones you don't want in the compost bin. I know that almost sounds like a terrible thing to do. Or you can give plants to your friends. Pot them up in little four-inch pots or have your friends bring extra pots they have. Pot them up in that, give them away. It's all good, but then you know you have the amount you want for your garden. There's nothing better than a garden that's just filled to the brim, at least in my estimation. I cram plants in my garden like crazy. Now there's other things over here that I am going to get started. Now, I said before these bachelor buttons, I really wanted to get them sewn in the fall out there in one bed because I know the ones I grow and they go to seed, they come up the next year of, by themselves and before the snow came I didn't get them in the ground so I'm hoping to go ahead and plant them out um, when the snow melts but I could go ahead and maybe winter sow a bunch of them and that may way I know I have a bunch that's an idea alrighty my friends that is how I winter sow hollyhocks it's pretty simple um, it's not much different than any of the others I just read the package for how deep they need to be make sure they're that deep I use regular potting soil. I don't use seed starting mix. And um, I'm not worried about it because we're going to be getting rain. I didn't even water up. My soil is a little bit moist. I don't know. I heard something out there. Anyways, so being that we're going to get like two inches of rain this weekend, they're going right out in the garden. Oh, I didn't put the holes in the top. Now I'm going to show you where I'm going to put them. You know, I should do a couple more and put them in my little DIY greenhouse and set them in there and then we'll see if there's a difference. I will have to water those in there because they won't get watered, but that's easy enough to do. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put these out in the garden and then I'm going to put a couple more jugs together. Then I'll put them in the little DIY greenhouse and I will take you in there and show you what I do. My battery's almost dead. So over here, you can see where we put the other jugs. I'll put those right there too, and they will get rained on and watered. These even have a little bit of snow in them, but that's all good. That's my spot for this year. So let's walk on over to my little greenhouse. Call it my little DIY greenhouse. I wonder what I should call it. Give it a cuter name, but anyways. So I'll show you where I put the jugs. So, so far, they're right here. This is an old kitty litter box that we no longer use, so I'm just going to put some water in there for them to soak up because you can see it doesn't get rain in here. This is dry over here, but you can see where it creeps underneath there. I have a few things. I have not taken down my tomato plants in here yet, so I need to do that. Um, next year, I, I shouldn't put them in the ground because, you know, they say that disease can accumulate. Um, I have not had any issues with disease. But I may put in some larger, large pots to grow my tomatoes in, in here. So it really worked. I wanted it to have a longer growing season for my tomatoes and putting them in this enclosure did the job. But we'll see. We'll see. For now, we are going to use in here for growing my winter sowing some containers inside so they may start sooner because they'll heat up sooner being inside this enclosure. Look at that. There's a foxglove coming up in here just of its own little volition and then I don't know what's been digging down there maybe something coming there's a crack there and then there's one over here and um yeah I haven't closed those in yet but I can and will but it hasn't been important I do have some very clear 
uh, tarps I could do it with and or I could put a little board over that section like a trim. I don't know I could do the same here it looks like a four a one by four would, would do the job too. So that's an option. Something easy. This is just a trial test trial and so far it has worked fantastic. I'm loving it. I put some of my uh, strawberries in here. Looks like they need a little bit of water so I'll get that and uh, water those in. Those were my ever sweet strawberries and uh, oh they are sweet and they they're called ever sweet because they produce throughout the summer nice big fat strawberries that are just so delicious but alrighty until next time bye